Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're going to finish up our rankings for week two. We got wide receivers and tight ends today. Probably a little bit to talk about here. Wide receivers, are king. we're always all over the board on them, especially once you get past the top 10. So it'll be interesting to see where we have these ranks. We have not talked about our ranks at all. We don't know where each other have them. So it's going to be interesting to see what's what we're thinking here. And tight ends, ugh, kind of ugly position last week, right? I mean, not much there. I don't know what to think. No, I mean, even the even the top guys didn't really perform. So. No, not at all. And I guess... It kind of happened last year too. Tight end was kind of up and down. There wasn't. Oh, there were only a couple of guys you could trust, and I mean those guys like Travis Kelsey didn't do much week one. So we'll see if any of us believe that's a fluke or not. But we're still ranking them high. Probably ranking them so high. So just <laughs> let you know. But make sure you check us out on Twitter at the FF Profit. Fantasy Football Profit is the Instagram account. You can go to the website fantasyfootballprofit.com. All the rankings will be listed there. They'll we change them all the time, so you'll be able to see all of our current changes will be on the website. If you have any questions going into this weekend for last minute decisions, probably you know flex spots, just you know send us a email message on Twitter, Instagram. We'll definitely try to answer as many of those as we can. If you have just a single player like a position question, just go check out our ranks. You'll know what we think about them there. Be both my ranks and Jeff's ranks. So. That's the easiest way to find out right away what we think about players, you know, within the same position. But obviously, flex are different, so different situations to think about. Let's get right into wide receivers, Jeff. Number one, obvious, obviously, still Antonio Brown for me. Even with the Minnesota matchup, which it should be tough, I'm still going Brown number one. What do you got? I'm actually not. I, I wondered. Um, how can you not though? I know it's really but how difficult. Minnesota looks uh, really that good. Yeah, but uh, no, I'm believe me. I, I it's Antonio you. Brown. Yeah, I get you. I, mean, I already I already know my bet. Doesn't matter. Whoever you have number one I'm versus Antonio Brown, that's the bet. No matter. I don't care who it is. It's Antonio Brown versus. Um, it's Antonio Brown versus Mike Evans. Nope. Julio. AJ. Jordy. <laughs> Jordy. Wow. I know. I'm, I'm. I feel like. All right. It's Antonio Brown versus Jordy. If you're yeah, if you're going on a top five wide receiver branch, you Marking know, limb, it down. It, branch limb. If you're going on a limb on one of these guys, um, I feel like Jordy might be it, but. I feel like this would be a high scoring game, and Jordy looked really, really good. Aaron Rodgers, uh, I just feel safe right. doing him. If Antonio you, Brown, I mean, I'm, I'm never going to argue with that pick. Jordy versus Antonio Brown. There we go. I, you, you have to accept it. So I know, unfortunately, there's no, nothing. Nothing. I beat, never, I never want to go against Antonio. Brown. You beat me last week. You're one and zero. You got me with Fournette versus Miller. Yeah. It's a terrible pick on my part. I was going to say, you picked it, too. I you did. I give you a choice of players and because I, I knew. At least I, I did pick correctly. I, I just, you also gave me one that you would have won. but Yeah, so. All right. It's Brown versus Nelson. That's an easy one for me. I have Nelson fifth. He's still in my top five, oh, but okay. he's, he's my fifth. My top five is Julio, AJ, Mike Evans, and then Nelson. What do you got? I got Nelson, Julio, and then Antonio Brown. That's wrong. And, uh, and then I got uh, OBJ. <laughs> And then I round it out with my man, Mike Evans. All right, and then I put Beckham six. It's just, I think he's going to play. I'm just, he's, I hope there's no issues with the ankle, but, you know, we don't know. So I'm just going to be a little bit more cautious and put him down. You kind of did too, probably. You know? I mean, that's why I didn't even think about putting him up there. Yep. But we have, I haven't seen Mike Evans either play yet. Um, he's going to get in Chicago, but at the same time, I'm letting that offense do one thing. And all I know about OBJ is if he is fully healthy, he even might go up my ranks because that offense, he is the entire thing. He is. So completely. you know they're just going to pepper him. Yeah, that's that's for sure. So he's, I think he'll end up moving up after this week, but it's just one week, be a little cautious, kind of yeah, put him down totally to see what happens. It. But our top six is the same pretty much every time. It's, these are our top six wide receivers, and it seems like it doesn't really stray from that too much. I mean, Nelson, there's one other guy, obviously, Dez, your guy. Not for me, you know, but... Des is the only other guy in the draft ranks. Yeah, draft, so I was going to say, not, not he has this a, week. He has a terrible matchup this week. That's why he's not up there for you, I know. Okay, where is Des actually? Let's just jump to Des quick before we get to the rest. I'm and curious. I, I, I'm not low on him once again. When he caught it, he looked tremendous. But he's going against Denver, who is amazing, and they're going to run the ball. I have him all the way down at number 17. I'm at number 17 as well. Okay. So, so exactly even, the same thing. Even though I love him, I won't, I won't pump yep. him up just for the heck of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough matchup. And they've shown that. If they don't need to, they're not going to force feed him if they don't need to. They didn't need to do anything 
against the Giants to win that game. So they didn't need to throw the ball to Dez all the time. But his game was probably better than what his stats show. He drew some pass interference calls. You know, he's – it was – yeah, you, Sony just looked at the style. I know two for 43, but Dez sucks. Yeah. No, he's – look into it a little bit more. He's actually – it was – there's nothing to be down on. And plus, Jenkins is a great corner. It's going to be a tough matchup every time for him against you know, the Giants. But this was the worry with Dez, though, too. Why people were probably down on our Dez rank. It was the the matchups coming up are tough. Yeah, fair. And the first two weeks are doing him no favors. But, yep. uh, you know, after he gets past Denver, um, he's going to skyrocket up my list. And yep. you saw him when he caught the ball. Uh, um, my gosh, he pretty much threw a guy to the ground, out sprinted another guy, and then they had to catch him from behind. I mean, anytime the Ball is in his vicinity. He looks like a top five wide receiver, which he is. And, you know, I know he's going to get a ton of good corners that are covering him, but um, once you get past these top, top guys, uh, no one can touch him. Yep. All right. What's your rest of your top ten then after we got the we got those top six? What do you got, seven, eight, nine, and ten? Did we go six? I think so. We had You had, or maybe not six. We went five. five. Oh, anyway, right. number six, I have Amari Cooper. Okay. Yep. We missed and that one. Number seven, I have Cooks. Eight, I have Michael Thomas, Doug Baldwin, and then I round it out with A.J. Green, even right, though AJ. they had a horrendous outing the first week. I've still put A.J. up there. I'm just, I'm hoping it was just a one-week fluke. So I had three, but yeah, my rest of my top was Amari Cooper was seventh, DeAndre Hopkins was eighth, Brandon Cook's ninth, and Michael Thomas rounds up my top ten. I'm not too worried about that game against Minnesota. I think he's still talented enough, and New Orleans is going to step back up. He'll be good. What about number 11? Number 11, I have, um, I actually have Demarius Thomas all the way up there. All right. That so, was, they did good against the Giants, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, it, once again, it didn't tell me a whole lot. Um, you know, I, I think Simeon showed enough where I, I can start relying on Demarius Thomas. Um, I don't know, he, he's just one of those guys that's very, very safe. Then Tyreek Hill, I want to know where you put Tyreek. Where'd he go in your ranks? Number 13. Wow, 13th. I know. I, I believe me. I don't want to do it either, but he just played too well. I mean, I can't. I can't hurt them. I mean, you know, I, mean? I can't penalize the guy for playing well. He's fourteenth for me. So, oh, okay. I mean, they showed they're going to use him. He's going to keep. It's hard to go against it. They're going to find a way to get him the ball. Oh yeah. So, that. and he doesn't need a whole lot. Even if you know, what I mean, like if they give him ten targets a game, yep, he's going to burn you maybe one week. Yeah. But one week you're going to get nothing out of him. But. The amount of big plays he scored on these these touchdowns he scores every week, it's happened so often now that you have to believe it's chances are much better that it's gonna happen than it's not. Yeah, it's not you know like I mean? a fluky. It, no, thing it's there. not anymore the way it's been going on. So you I mean he's definitely a wide receiver too, so we're just putting him as a wide receiver too. That's what he is, I think, at this point. And Kansas City looked great. So I wanna see if maybe maybe that was just a one week fluke. We'll see. Maybe we'll be wrong, but I think you need to play him up there as of yeah. now. I mean, if he's on my team, I'm, I'm playing him. And then if he does burn me, I, I don't. I wouldn't even feel bad about it. All right, Sammy Watkins, Jeff. You've been hesitant on Sammy. He only had five catches, five targets. Getting back into it maybe with yeah, Goff I, there. But I'm, I'll be honest. I'm still hesitant on I him. figured you are. Yeah, so he's all the way down at 31 for me still. You are. Uh, ah, I'm just going to – I can't deal with this. 31. I was, uh, I, it, reverse, reverse those numbers. Are, <laughs> did, is that what you meant to do? Wow, where do you have them? Thirteen. You do not do you I, really. No, of course I do. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I think I think thirty first might be too low, and I think thirteenth is way too high. No, it's probably low. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No. All right. No. Oh man. I, I mean, maybe he's a safer player than I'm giving him credit for. I mean, to be honest, he, he'll probably move up. Uh, I could see him jumping up. Three 13th? spots really easily. 13th, probably. Yeah. But, I mean... Good thing we already made our bet, huh? Oh, yeah. I would have loved to take this one. I mean, no, I, I could easily see him moving up into, say, 27th really easily uh, for me. You know, looking at the guys, I'm like, you know, if I really wanted to. But 13th, I mean... Yeah. Y- you have him above... Everybody. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, just everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I like him better than these guys. I mean, what did you see in that first game where you uh, are still that confident? I understand being like, he's a starter. I really do think they're going to target him a lot. They looked at him first drive right away. Mm-hmm. Got bump, first two passes. He, he's getting work right away. They just got to a point where they didn't need to do anything. They did not need to pass the ball very much. They didn't need to throw it around as much. He had five targets, which is solid. He caught all five targets. Mm-hmm. You know, He's going to be the top guy there. They just they were dominating that game so much, scoring special teams, defense, whatever. They didn't need to really force the issue. But I think Goff is good enough, and Sammy Watkins is so talented that 
I think it's going to happen. And I don't, I'm not big on Washington's defense. So I see a big game program coming from Sandy. Sammy. I don't think the defense is, they're not going to dominate like they did. They're going to need to pass more. I think it's going to turn in his favor. I give you this. I don't, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. And I think this is the, the crazy part about the Rams and Sammy Watkins and Goff is you're, he, there is going to be a situation where you're going to disagree heavily. And you know, if he catches a touchdown, you know, he could jump up these. I don't know. I, I, there's just no <laughs> way I can put him in my top 20. I, I guess that's what it comes I, down to. If, if you had, even if you wanted to argue that he was the 20, you know, 21st or something like that, I, I would probably concede. But 13th, I just think is way too much of a stretch. I think we're probably, this is the one player we differ the yeah, most yeah, on. Yeah, I think so. By far. So he's going to be talked about a lot. Every we'll, week. we'll see. I mean, I, I could be completely wrong. I'm, I'm completely hedging my bets the way of I don't trust Goff yet and I don't trust Rams after one yep. game. And, you know, their running game didn't do anything either. So, you, you know, you don't have to try to stop Gurley. You're going to load up on Sammy Watkins. Yep. I mean, who are you gonna, I mean, who else are you going to guard? I guess you'd be trying to get Sammy Watkins and maybe the ball go to Cooper Cup. Yeah. Oh, no, don't start me on Cooper Cup, too. <laughs> Are you going to get Woods in this conversation as well? No, I'm not going to talk about those guys today. <laughs> we'll see if they do something. Maybe you know, we will talk about them next week. All right, any other players that are interesting around here in this top 20 you're curious about? Um, where do you have an Elshon? 19th. Okay, I have him at 20th, so not that far off. KC is a good team, but I was just wondering because I know people are going to be down on him after. Yeah, I'm not too team. down on him, but I think this I think he's that might be what he kind of does. He's going to have weeks like that. He's not going to be a dominant every week guy, it feels like. But, you know. And the other guys, where are you, and I'm probably uh, guilty of probably putting him too high, but where are you putting Devontae Parker since we haven't been able to see him <laughs> yeah. and it's the first time he's really coming out with color? I know everyone's going to be kind of amping him up. I have him 24th. Okay, you amped him up more than I did. Yep. All right. Not too bad, though. So I have him at 29th. Um, so it's one of those. I would probably put him in my roster. I'd really want to see yep. what he does. Maybe this is like a one week. We, we weren't disappointed by him last week. <laughs> like we were at so many other guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, he actually moved up because he wasn't playing. Yeah, just because he didn't play. He didn't disappoint us. So why not? All right. Some curious situations. Devontae Adams, did he drop for you after seeing the what? workload? Okay. You're actually going to love this. Devontae Adams. <laughs> He did drop, but only to 25th. And once again, okay. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. But you're going to love this that Randall Cobb is number 18 for me. Nice. So I, I like it. Jordy won 18 at Cobb, and then I have my uh, Devontae Adams at 25th. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of scoring to go around, but Cobb shooting above him is, you know, it hurts me in my heart. But it, I mean, when you're right, you're right. Yeah. And I think I really just, I got. I don't want to say I saw this coming, you know. I just saw the potential that this could happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and we don't know for sure yet, but yeah. he looked the part, and, you know, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm running with it. I, I think he is going to be a, a guy that can really get open, on, you know, on all these teams. And I put Cobb 23rd because I'm just buying in. I'm all in. So I put him 23rd, and I put Adams 25th. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just all in on Cobb because I guess this is my guy now. I have to, I have to run with it. And I do. I think the work is going to be there. I think he's going to be great. So I like it. Adams, I'm not. I'm not done on it. I think he's still going to have enough. So he's still a starter. He's still there. So he's there. What about T. Y. Hilton? What are we doing with Hilton? I mean, it's a really sad day when a guy that talented drops out of my starter. So he's number thirty-two for me. He's twenty-eight for me, and man, that's oh, feels feels terrible. I know, right? I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong not putting him higher. But he looked so bad, and they did. And at this point, I need to even if. I need to see something to put him back up again. I need to see some kind of semblance of an offense or yeah. some kind of life from that passing game to move him back up because I, I don't feel confident in it whatsoever. Their quarterback situation looked so bad that I don't care who you had there. I mean, it, you could have Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, and you know and Jordy Nelson all on the same team, and I would probably all rank them all low. Like yeah. It doesn't matter how good you are if the quarterback can't get you the ball. Yeah, it just, and they looked, they looked terrible. I just can't, I mean, it just, they look bad. So it's hard for me to play. What about Martavis Bryant? He didn't do anything, and he's playing against Minnesota, who should be solid. What you end up doing with him? They should. I, I'm still kind of high on him. I'm, I'm going 22nd on him. Okay. And uh, I don't really have a good reason. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> I mean, Minnesota scares me, but at the same time when I'm looking at other people around there, I just think that uh, 
you know, Antonio Brown got every possible pass thrown his way. I think this is one where Brian has to bounce back. He's just too talented not to. I think he's going to be an up-and-down player. Exactly. But I, yeah. I think this is the one that he... And they're, they're home, right? So, Deal. like, Pittsburgh's at home. They play really, really well. I don't care who it is. But Antonio Brown's not number one? No. Okay. Still a check. I know. But I, I think that Minnesota can probably shut down whoever they want. They won't shut down Antonio Brown completely. But I, I think they're going to give the other guys the opportunity to, hey, like, you beat me, Antonio Brown, the best out there is not going to. I put Bryant 30th. I just, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. He's not, I mean, it's, once you're in 22 to 30, it's honestly, it's a difference, but it's not even that big of a difference. No, I mean, they're both playing for us, but yeah. What about Diggs? He played a solid game, seven catches, 93 yards, two I, touchdowns. I, I'm falling in love with that guy. I think he's a, we've always, we both said he's a great player. We like the player. Just worried about the situation if, if Minnesota would ever be able to pass the ball very well, but if they do, well, they looked like they could. Yeah. I mean, they not look, they did. They did. And, and I wasn't sure if they were How ever bad is New Orleans, though? We yeah, don't know. I, I think, we don't know. <laughs> it's, I think New Orleans was really bad. But at the same time, I mean, him and Thalen both looked really, really good. And I have Stefan Diggs all the way at number 12. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think he's going to be the go-to he's, guy. He's, he's talented enough. Yeah. And, and I think he's talented even if he doesn't get the, the you know, down the field passes. And I think... Bradford kind of showed little spurts of the thing I thought maybe he was missing last week. I also think it was bad, bad defense. But at the same time, I, I think Stefan Diggs is the real deal. And um, even with Bradford, I, you know, they're going to have to throw it against Pittsburgh because I think Pittsburgh will actually put up points this time around. So I didn't move him all the way up that high, but I did put him 20th. But And this isn't even – I don't think this is us being reactionary to just one week thing. We've seen this from Stefan Diggs before. We know how good the guy is. It's just if this was going to – you know, continue to be something like this isn't this old guy we haven't heard of before at one huge week and we moved him off. This is a guy who we know is good. Yeah. And, you know, and just to preface that as well, it's not like I moved Thalen up incredible amounts either. I mean, where's Thalen? He's 33 for me. He's 33 for me too. Oh, there. So, I mean, it's one of those where like Thalen had an unbelievable game as well. I, I think Stefan Diggs is really that good. And you saw it last year too in the beginning. Yep. Even when they play this nickel and dime, I'm down the field. Stefan Diggs is really, really good with the ball in his hands. So he played really, really excellent until he got injured last yep. last year. So I think this is just a situation where yep. he's finally healthy. All right, before we move to tight ends, just a couple of guys. I was curious. Brandon Marshall, how far down? Dude, I <laughs> I would actually have to look. That's how far down this guy is. You know, he could definitely bounce back. It could just be This really okay. could be reactionary for us. But I do have him 44th, so not as bad as it – could be since he <laughs> could have caught one ball, but I mean, I won't. I won't I start him. I have him forty fifth. <laughs> so yeah, and this I this I don't could be this, but I don't. It's not because of how bad he was with the Jets. The whole narrative was it was just the bad team. He gave up on how bad they were. Uh, do we know that? I mean, how are we sure that he just wasn't done? I mean, he was it, this close it, to being you know, held catchless. Yeah, like, with with no Beckham to draw. And Dallas is not a great defense. There's nobody that's ever thought that. Maybe maybe they are this year. Maybe we just don't know that. But they're, they're, they're just, man, you know, I I can't even. No, they can't. They're not that great, are they? Maybe they're medium. Maybe they're okay. I, have, I don't know. I, have no I don't way think. Of I don't think they are. Poorly. It's, it's so hard to say. But he's down there for me until I see something. Because you know what? I have a whole season last year of him doing nothing to go off of. It's not just one game. People might try to say that oh, he just he had one bad game. No, he had a whole he had a bad season plus a one bad game. Mm-hmm. That's what he's going off of right here. And he's what thirty three years old. This he could be done. We don't. We he could be. Yeah, and the truth is, I don't even know if he cares either. No, I mean like uh, we, we've seen him just I've completely seen, give up. Yeah, that happens. With he's him. had a long, great career. Like if you, know what I mean, it, it, it's not so much saying hey, he's bad for the team or anything like that. But yep. you get. Up there, and you know you're getting beat up, and you're going against number one corners if OBJ is not there, and maybe you're just not into the team because it's brand new. You know, maybe his heart's just not in it anymore. I don't know, but something was wrong that first game. That's all I know. Yep. All right, one last guy I want to ask about: Kenny Galladay. <laughs> Galladay, I have him number fifty-two. <laughs> I have him number fifty-two. Do you really? I swear to God. Okay, that was just bizarre at times, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, no joke, fifty-two. I, I, I just want to pick a guy. Wait, who's your number fifty-one? And don't. Okay, no. We're not. <laughs> I just had to really check that one. Um, I was going to say, do you have anyone up here that uh, has hung on even though he didn't have a great game or perhaps is a, a surprise for, for people? Mm, let me see here. Who's 
moving up my list. I, I mean, maybe somebody hung on with a bad game. Kelvin Benjamin's still 27th for me. He had a bad game. I'm not moving him yet. Waiting to see. Uh, Corey Davis moved up to 32nd for me. I really liked what I saw from him. I think he's just going to get more work. And Decker wasn't really involved. So I think Corey Davis could just keep increasing. Corey Coleman's up to 36th for me. Seemed to be involved with the offense. And then let me see if there's anybody else. Eh, not really. Um, nobody's that's really not standing out here. What about the rest of my time? Do, do, do. No, not really. Larry Fitzgerald, what about him? Did you? We, we both ranked him high last week. He has a good matchup this week, but a, he has a maybe a bad quarterback. Yeah, uh, let me find the guy. No, <laughs> I know I was moving him down, down, down. Um, yeah, he has a great matchup, so he did stick around. He's number 19 for me. All right, he's 22nd for me. But. I begrudgingly put him there because Indy is so bad. Well, what about Golden Tate? Um, I haven't met. 24th. I know he goes against New Giants, but he looked, I mean, he looked sharp. He caught a ton of balls. I don't think that's going to change, really. So, um, it's you just, know, will he get the touchdowns? Even I with, think he has to, really. No, in PBR, his value is much higher. Obviously, yeah. people don't, this is, we're going standard ranks here. PBR, he would definitely jump up because he's gonna, if he's going to get 10 catches, he's going to be much more valuable. But he, I don't know how many touchdowns he's going to get. So, in standard, his value is going to be limited a little bit. So, mm -hmm. all right, any other players before we move to tight ends? No, I don't, I don't have any uh, any real surprises on that one. All right, tight ends. My number one is Gronk. Oh, there's sticking, a surprise. Sticking with Gronk at number one, yeah, he had a bad game. Nah, he he dropped a touchdown, though. I think if that touchdown, if he's able to bring that in, his game looks great, just like that. He's, yeah, I mean, tight end, no one really stood out, so mine really didn't change a whole lot. No, I, I go Gronk, Kelsey. I'm going to stick with Jimmy Graham at three. Um, just... San Francisco is no good, so I'm going to give him a chance. Jordan Reed's my fourth. Greg Olson's fifth. I don't really want to put Olson there because I still don't think Greg Olson's that good. And I think I was – okay, maybe he's not good. He had a terrible end of last season. And, it's again, it started in week one again this year, so I don't know. So he's my fifth, and I actually would think about making him lower, but not yet. What do you got, top five? Uh, Gronk, obviously number one. Um, I have Jimmy Graham at number two. Okay. Um, he, once again, it's just a matchup. Yep. And uh, he played poorly, or that whole offense did. Uh, Kelsey at number three. I have Reed at number four. And then I have Ertz at number five. Good. That's the one I almost did. I almost put Ertz there at fifth. And where'd you put Olsen? Number six. Okay, I, that's the one I'm about to do. Because I'm telling you, I don't know. If you look at Olsen's game log from last year, that last half of the season doesn't look good. And... He starts it with this, 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 your mate. I mean, is this, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but how, that's a lot of games to go off of now for him. So I don't know if in one or two more weeks of this, I think he's going to be out of my top 10 and that's crazy to say, but it's a lot of games to do this. So, and there's, um, there's a lot of guys. I mean, it's very difficult because week one didn't show you a whole lot, No, but at the same time, there's a lot of guys that are in really good situations that could move above them because that, that Carolina offense is still very much in, uh, struggling. Yeah, and that's why, if we're, again, not uh, this is, I'm to say, it's not terribly reactionary for like an Olsen-Ertz thing right there because look at Ertz's last half of last season. Look at Olsen's last half of last season. It just continued week one. The same thing happened, what they were doing last year. So maybe Ertz should be, and Ertz is ahead of Olsen. Let's make the change right there. I'm doing it. There you go. I, I can't not. I think Ertz is just the way he's been playing. He feels like a very safe player. I'm not saying Ertz. Ertz I don't know. To me, Ertz, this is kind of his level, I feel like. Top, like a fifth. Yeah. I, he doesn't feel like the top end guy to me. He feels like a very good guy, a very safe guy. He's going to catch a lot of balls. I don't think he's ever going to be dominant. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I just don't see that much from I mean, him. I don't see it yet. But who knows? Wentz is going in the right direction. And I, I think Casey is a very, you know, they're uh, – a very decent, you know, defense. If I mean the way they played against New England, you have to think that they're a good defense, right? Yeah. And, and in that sense, I don't necessarily think Aguilar is anything special. Still, Elshon was kind of shut down last week. Uh, I just think Ertz has a ton of, um, you know, he's going to have a ton of potential in order to catch a, a lot of balls. Um, so that, that's where I, I think he's at. I, I do think he's very talented, and and really, you know, in the past has been injury that really stopped his progression. All right, what's the rest of your top ten there? Going from what seven on? Is that where we're at? Yeah, yeah. seven. So I got Rudolph at seven, Walker at eight. <laughs> so it's pretty much people that <laughs> I don't want to start, but yeah. they just keep producing. Um, and then I have uh, Eifert at nine, yep. and I have Hunter Henry at ten. All right, 
Yeah, I went Rudolph at seven. I went Walker at eight. I went Eifert at nine. Same thing. <laughs> and I went Martellus Bennett at 10. Okay. And with Walker, again, I'm not uh, – Walker, I feel like he – I've been, I guess, bashing Delaney Walker for a little bit here. So he had, he's safe. I mean, he, he that's the point. Yeah, he actually he is safe. As much as I don't like, I don't think he's top level, but I think he's safe. And Eifert, Eifert has the potential to be up there, but obviously what he just showed is not good. Exactly. And he, I mean, he might be too touchdown dependent. Walker's not well, touchdown dependent. Yeah, and we always knew that, right? We always yeah. knew Eifert was touchdown dependent, but we always thought if he was healthy and in there, yeah. he would have a very good chance of, you know, catching a touchdown, but they played so poorly last yep. week that I need to see something out of him. Yeah, and I put Hunter Henry 11th, so. Okay. Yeah, it's just, once again, I'm still going to put him there until, I'm going to give him a few weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, where do you have, um, actually, two other people that I have, uh, I'll just tell you, at 12 and 13th, because I have Martellus Bennett at number 11. Yep. Um, 12 and 13th, I have Jason Wynn and Austin Hooper. Where do you have <laughs> those two? Because Wynn has been doing really, really well yeah. in the preseason and the first game, and then Austin Hooper obviously had yep. two amazing catches, but... You know, just two. I had Austin Hooper at 12. Okay. And I had Jason Witten at 13. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got to get farther into this season because it's, it's stupid. I mean, Witten, again, we didn't rank him very high at the ranks this year. And I guess, you know what the worry is? They're, they're going against Denver, who mm-hmm. is shutting down everybody. But that could mean that maybe that's a safety blanket for Dak if they need to go somewhere. Well, it's sure looking but, like it right now. And it's not even necessarily – the matchup's terrible. Everything. I mean, and and, I'm, not, and I'm not even excited about him, but I'm really not excited about the rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where the problem comes in. Everyone else is just, ugh. Right? That's where I think my issue is, is I'm just worried about everybody else, and I don't really think there's much there. You know, one guy that I think I do have to move up a bit now that I'm staring at this for so long again is I think, I think I'm actually moving Cameron Braid up a few. He has a good matchup, and uh, I don't think O.J. Howard is going to be the number one guy right there. I'm going to put him at number 14. I know that's not going to change anyone's thing, but for me, it, it was bugging me. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, you got to move it. Let's see here. Ebron. We talk about Ebron a lot because, yeah, we are, we, are, we are Lions fans, and Ebron disappoints us all the time. So where'd you put him? All right. So Ebron, let me get back here. I have him all the way down at 19. I have him 18. I'm yeah. done with the guy. Yeah, I'm, I have no intention of playing him anytime soon. He's got to show me something. At yep. this point, it's, it's up to him to prove to me a couple of games yep. in a row. Yep. So that's – once you get down to these level of tight end, you're probably not starting any of these guys, so they don't really matter. And that's where I put Ebron. I put him to a spot where he doesn't matter anymore, so I don't have to think about him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just, just disappointed. Off my radar. <laughs> That, uh, any other guys you want to talk about down there? Is that's about that's about it for me. None of these guys are no. interesting I, to me. I guess yet. Uh, as far as a um, uh, going along with the hype train, did you say anything from Evan Ingram? I know that we were talking about how poorly that uh, the Giants did. He did have a, a catch or two. I can't exactly remember, but um, you know, he looked kind of good. And I'm wondering if they're going to start looking elsewhere now that Marshall struggled so heavily. That could be something to look for. If be, if if they decide Marshall can't be a player, I mean Ingram will definitely get some more work. I mean, four for forty-four, is solid. Yeah, especially in that game when no one's really doing anything. You know, that's a that's a solid outing. Mm-hmm. So, it he could have more value. I did rank him nineteenth this week, so he's inside my top twenty. But that's about it. Yeah, I'm going to keep him down there yet, just because I don't know enough. And he could definitely be moving up for me. I think he's a guy who definitely I could see moving up here soon. And actually, I'm to the point now where some of these guys I wouldn't mind putting Ingram Howard on my team. Even Nichoku, I don't care. Like, if you really want to take a risk, Ebron sucks. Take Get rid of him. <laughs> I don't and know if I would take a risk in any of those guys necessarily. Over Ebron, I would. Yeah, I mean, I guess over Ebron, but there's probably a couple other yeah. guys you this is, grab. <laughs> we're basically now into, like, talking about 20-team league stuff right here. <laughs> we got way too deep into tight end ranks. We get, we get bored with talking about the top 10 all the time. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with the tight ends. <laughs> That'll be it for me. Got anything else? Yeah, I think we broke it. Where, where'd, you rank, where'd you rank George Kittle? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't care. I don't, How far down? I, I, I really don't care. We ranked George Kittle. I <laughs> ranked him 32nd. <laughs> we, we've officially broken Craig for the day, so I think it's a good place to, to end it. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll do a little instant reaction to the games, and <laughs> probably have you know some more injury news here because you know hopefully we'll have some more you know idea of what's going to be happening with some of these guys. I feel like we're not going to really know much about 
Odell though game time. I feel like they're just gonna let it drag out. Maybe he should be playing. He'd be good. But you know, it'd be nice to see. Maybe we'll have some clarification on some other players. If who's gonna play in Arizona? You know, is it gonna be Kerwin Williams all the time? Or are they gonna? I like doubt they'll tell us yet. <laughs> yeah, I think that you're just gonna wait and find out <laughs> during yeah. the game. Yeah, and then we'll definitely you know break down the Texans and Bengals. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe it is. I'm no. I'm actually curious. I no. The thing no. is, I want to see what Andy Dalton comes back as. Okay, like that's true. I'm I mean, curious about how that works. I want to see if they do anything more with Nixon. I'm really interested. And if Deshaun Watson is the starter, play. I want to see what Watson's going to do yeah, now. Can he, he kinda, can he turn around? And if he does, I mean, it'd yep. be really fun to see him. You know, throw the ball to Hopkins. I mean, Hopkins had 11 targets. I think it was in the second half after Watson came in. I mean, is he going to get 20 targets? I mean, honestly, they probably should throw him. I mean, it's not doubt that they should, but with Watson, he'll probably, if he throws it to him 20 times, he might yeah. throw four interceptions doing <laughs> he that. Could. So. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about injuries. talk about, you know, whatever else we can come up with. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.